So, Super Box Cobra, very special day. I've just been told it's International Teachers Day, so your teachers are expecting lots of presents and praise today, right? I think you should give the teachers in the classroom a round of applause because they've been teaching you so well. Clap! <laughs> it's also, right, it's also the fifth day of Black History Month. And you probably knew that you were going to get a, a, an assembly on black history. And you're probably thinking, oh, we're going to learn about slavery or civil rights or something like that. But I decided to ask you a different question instead. And my question is, is how many superheroes can you uh, think of in... I'm going to give you 15 seconds because you're year 11. The record... was held yesterday by a year 10 student, they got 17. 17. Would anyone like to attempt 18? Okay, Matthew, go on. Okay, uh, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Black Panther, ba uh, Martian Manhunter, Red Witch, um, Magneto, Juggernaut, Wait, pause. Does Magneto count as a superhero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Continue. Yeah. Um, I can all three. Yeah. Uh, Cyclops. Yeah. Jean Grey. Yeah. Um, okay. How many times? Oh. Uh, you're on 16 Hulk, so far. Hulk, Red Hulk. Um, <laughs> okay. You definitely got the record. You got 18. Right? Give them a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> right. And someone who isn't Matthew this time. Um, Here's a bit more of a challenging question. Black superheroes. Oh. But you're not allowed to say Black Panther, Falcon, or War Machine. And I can tell you this right now. The record for this is two. Okay, other than Matthew, yeah? How many of you think you've got at least five? At least five. Four? You can do three. Okay, go, Sam. Uh, Black Hawk Scott. Yeah. Uh, Black Lightning. Yeah. And John Stewart. I will take John Stewart. Right? <laughs> now, here's the thing. I often ask that question, and we don't always get that many black superheroes' names. And sometimes I wonder why, because there are so many. Right? Now, by the end of this assembly, I want you to be able to name a whole bunch more uh, superheroes than the ones I've named and the ones that Samuels has named, Samuel has named, right? And so I'm going to take you through the history of black comic book heroes from 1940 to around about 1995. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to start around the 1940s, right? So the 1940s uh, was the time where black comic book writers started to write about their own characters. In the 1930s, where we had uh, black people in comic books, um, the depiction of them was very, very racist. So there were some people that said, actually, we've had enough of this, so we're going to make our own comic books. And so the first one was a comic book anthology called All Negro Comics. And they had a couple of characters. Might sound familiar to you, or at least the premise might sound familiar to you, the first one being Lion Man. Lion Man was a scientist from the US, but he moved to Africa because he wanted to protect the um, uranium deposits that uh, Africa has in its lands. Does that sound familiar to you? Is there a superhero now that's quite similar? Who? Black Panther. Black Panther is actually based on this character. So Lion Man came first, Black Panther came much, much later. But we'll be talking about Black Panther later. Um, we also had Ace Harlem, who was written um, round about the time where black police officers started, get uh, started to get promoted in the US police force. What the comic book writers wanted to do was encourage young uh, children to join the police force um, because they said it gave them opportunity to become detectives, um, and captains and police their own neighbourhood. 
and so that's where Ace Harlem came from. And Ace Harlem was a very, very competent detective, uh, one of the best in the police force. And so a lot of children was reading this at the time, and they really liked it. It was a very popular part of the comic book. So then we move on to the 1950s, and this is when the variety of black characters from white writers started to become more diverse. So, the first one I wanted to talk about was, what, that one? Waxu Pink of the Bantu. This was Marvel's first attempt at um, a main character in a comic book. Didn't have his own solo comic book, but it was um, a warrior prince in Africa, and they would just talk about his adventures. On the other hand, this was one of my favorite comic books. Well, not the whole comic book, but this particular issue. Issue 33, right? Incredible science fiction. The title of the comic book was Judgment Day. Now, this was a special comic book for me because it was the first anti-racist comic book ever to be written in the US. Um, and the premise was that there was this astronaut and he was one of the leaders of the Intergalactic Federation. And he was going from planet to planet and he was deciding which planets should become part of the Intergalactic Federation. Um, and he came to this planet that was full of robots and there were red robots and there were blue robots, but the blue robots had less rights than the red robots. Um, and so this astronaut said, uh, because of the planet's bigotry, they could not enter the Intergalactic Federation. Right at the end of the comic, in like the final few panels, the astronaut takes off his helmet and it's revealed that the astronaut is a black man. Now, why this was so significant is because in the 1950s, they introduced um, the Comic Code Authority and their job was to censor comics. And the reason for that is because the government was worried that comic books were corrupting the youth. What they decided is that because it showed the black man in a position of authority, that they were going to ban this comic. But the comic book got published anyway, right? So, 1960s, our first solo comic. So it wasn't part of a series of comics, it was a solo comic, right? Our first character was Lobo. He didn't have superpowers, but he was the first black character to have his own comic. Um, and he was based in the Western times. He was a gunslinger. Um, he was quite wealthy. Um, so this was quite unusual to see for a black character in a comic book. But then, one character that you should now be familiar with now is Black Panther. And black Panther debuted in a comic book called The Fantastic Four. You might have seen some Fantastic Four movies. They're not very good but we ignore that anyway. Um, and Black Panther was the first black comic book <coughs> hero that had superpowers. So think about, we already had uh, people like Superman in comic books, we already had people like Spider-Man in comic books, and these were white characters that had superpowers, but this was the first black character to have superpowers. Can anyone guess which was the second black character okay. to have superpowers? It was a blade. No? So Static Shock became came much, much later. No? It was actually Falcon. Yeah? Now, I'm not talking about his mechanical wings. I'm talking about his ability to telepathically communicate with birds. That was his superpower. Right? It wasn't a great superpower, but it was a superpower all the same. Right. Uh, but it wasn't until 1970s, the 1970s, that we had a black superhero with superpowers that had their own comic book, and it was a Black Panther. It was actually Power Man, or you know him as Luke Cage. Right. Now, this is Luke Cage is a cool story because this is about um, a person who was wrongly accused of a crime put in prison and when he was in <coughs> prison they did experiments on him to make his skin bulletproof and him getting super strength was kind of the side effect of that. What's really interesting is that this was about the same time that um, news came out that US, the US government had, at, well, what should I say, were doing 
experiments on black people, especially black prisoners, for a very, 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 very long time. A very long time. And one of those experiments was to try and make their skin impervious to chemical attack. And that's what Luke Cage is based on. But it wasn't until the year after that Marvel Comics decided to make Black Panther a solo comic. Um, you mentioned Blade already, so that was in 1975. Um, but we also had some of our first black female superheroes. Uh, my favourite one is Storm. So I heard some people in the audience mention Storm before. She was worshipped as a goddess in Egypt because of her ability to control the weather. Um, and this character in the red was part of a duo called um, Daughters of the Dragon. Um, those of you who've ever watched the Eye of Fist series might recognise the name Misty Knight. Yeah, yeah that's, where, that's who that is. That's Misty Knight. And she debuted in 1972. Um, DC, they had their attempt someone named John Stewart already, right? John Stewart was the first black Green Lantern. Um, of course, there are loads of Green Lanterns, loads of them, um, and they come in all sorts of shades, green, purple, red, brown, white, whatever, there's loads of Green Lanterns. But this was um, Black Racer, was DC's first black um, comic book character, and his superpower was to be able to fly around in the sky on skis go figure, it was a great one. But they didn't have their first solo character until Black Lightning in 1977. So then we move on to the 90s, right? This is where I started reading comic books. Three of my favorite characters, Lucas Bishop. He was a man that time traveled. He came back in time and joined the X-Men. He was lost in time for a while. Um, Albert Simmons. Born, CIA agent who sold his soul to the devil. I don't know why that makes him a superhero, but he was. Um, and Static Shock, right? great superhero right there. Um, he started off as a cartoon series. So as you can see that over time, there's been so many changes in terms of the depiction of black people in comic books. But there's such a variety now, so you can find um, Asian comic book heroes, you can find African comic book heroes, you can find Russian comic book heroes, South American comic book heroes, and I could name you examples of each of them, right? So if ever you're thinking, oh, there aren't comic book heroes out there that represent me, think again, you just have to do your research. They're out there and all of their comics are great. They, they make you think about not necessarily what is, but what could be. So, it being Black History Month, right, I want you lot to think of something. I'm going to run a competition that closes next Friday because I think we need some articles in the newsletter and I think it's about time I've started giving out some prizes. I haven't decided what the prize is going to be yet, but it's going to be a good prize. Right, so I want you to think of somebody, could be alive, could be dead, right, that is a hero to you. Right? And I want you to write an article about why they're a superhero to you. Or, if you don't feel like writing to the artists out there, pick that real life hero. And I want you to draw what they would look like if they were a superhero in a comic book. Right? I've had some fantastic entries right now. And any of you that have been in my office know that I have this calendar that I have all of these people from black history. Right? And they're all drawn as comic book heroes. So if you need some inspiration, you can come to my office and check that out, okay? I'm gonna leave it there because I know I've overrun, right? But you've been a very good audience. I hope now you can name at least three or four black comic book heroes. Do people feel that they can do that now? <laughs> some of you, yeah? Okay, well, the presentation is available for you if you want it and you need a reminder, but thank you.